Thank you for joining us today. I'm Lorraine Clausen, and I will be the producer for today's Skype for Business for telecommuting. And with me today is Sarah Sage. Sarah is our project manager for the new phone project. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Sarah, and she will walk you through today's presentation. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Laureen, for the introduction. Today, we'll be talking about Skype for Business. I know I've heard a lot of questions about when to use this particular platform versus others that are available to campus. So today, I'll try to describe the different users and their uh, different feature sets that are available to them and when you would want to use Skype for Business. So our agenda is pretty simple. First, we'll go over what Skype for Business is. I know that a lot of you may be familiar with Skype, uh, but this is a, a, a platform that actually, it, it runs on multiple platforms. So you have different options depending on your needs. We also will highlight enterprise voice versus non-enterprise voice users. Those of you may not be aware what enterprise voice is and why it matters, but you'll get a different feature set depending on uh, your availability in that user pool. So when to use Skype for Business? It's really dependent upon your attendees and who you expect to be there and what you want to show them. We'll even cover devices, headsets, and webcams. Uh, we'll talk about the three different platforms today, the soft client, mobile app, web app. Then we'll go through a live demo. And finally, just a quick uh, touch on online meeting etiquette. So what is Skype for Business? Those of you might be more familiar with it on your soft client. That is your Mac or PC. This could be a laptop or a desktop. Uh, you'll see it as a, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you. When we say soft client, we're talking about this. All right, there's also a mobile app. You can go to the App Store, download it onto your mobile device, and uh, you have another uh, Skype for Business platform there. We also have a web app, which is accessible through most web browsers. So before we go into the details of what you can do in Skype for Business, you need to determine what kind of user you are. So on the phone replacement project, we have been passing out new phones. And it's not just been phones, but it's also been user migrations. So those of you on the old phones, the PBX system, are non-enterprise voice users. Those of you that have a functioning phone, a new phone on your desk, you are an enterprise voice user. To date, we've been able to convert nearly 40% of users on campus. So uh, you'll, you'll be split. Um, and this is important. Are there any questions about this particular item? Okay. So why this is important. Those of you who are still using your old PBX phones, which you're already probably aware of, you can forward to another line should you need to telecommute. Uh, the way Skype works for you today is that all of your meetings should have just SMU employees. You don't have students attending the call. All your work study students may have the service when they're signed into the soft client. Uh, and you don't have guests on your calls or on your conference calls. So um, the, the users who are SMU employees, that being said, they need to be logged into the soft client. Again, that's this device. It should pop up for you to sign in to in the morning. Um, if not, you can search for uh, Skype in your uh, search bar and open it up and sign into it for the first time if you've not done so already. This will become critical for normal working hours. Those of you who are enterprise voice users, again, you have the phone that's sitting on your desk. It's the new phone and it works. It has dial tone. You're able to call people regularly. For you, Skype is a different animal. You can also have meetings with internal or external folks to SMU. This includes SMU employees and other federated Skype users. Federated Skype users are other people, typically from other institutions, that also use Skype. 
and they have compatibility. These users should know if they're on Skype for business or not. Uh, when you're an enterprise voice user, you can also make conference bridges with dial-in numbers. This is different from non-enterprise voice users. So students and guests can get audio only uh, should they want to join your call. That's uh, available to them because a dial-in number appears with the Skype meeting invite, which we'll also cover. All right, headsets and webcams. Those of you who will be telecommuting, often you need to uh, procure devices. We have the SMU procurement website where you can find the following headsets and, um, and webcams. These are available through the SMU website. Speak with your supervisor. Uh, there may be other methods of procurement, uh, but just uh, call, call them or talk with them first. Skype certified devices will provide the best experience with Skype for Business. So um, any type of phone, ones that plug into your phone, your, your actual uh, speakers on your laptop, for those of you who have speakers on your laptop, they're, they're not typically Skype certified. A headset will really give you the best quality audio. So let's get into uh, features that are available for enterprise voice users. Again, they have more features available to them than non-enterprise voice PBX users. What's important is that the soft client is really the key to most of your functionality in Skype. You can do direct calls, private messages, and then of course group chat or conference calls with multiple people. These are what we call critical features. Optional features is that you can at the same time be signed into your cell phone uh, through the Skype for Business app and receive all of the same functionality. It is optional um, because you can get all of the same functionality through your laptop or desktop. And last, you have the web app. This is really a backup for conference calls if for some reason your soft client isn't working. It won't provide the best experience, but we did want to show it as the third platform available for use. And of course, all of these features are best delivered with Skype certified devices. As you can see for non-enterprise voice users, the board is a little different. Uh, the soft client becomes more critical for those who are non-enterprise voice PBX users. You have direct Skype calling ability with internal SMU employees. You also have private message. Um, a lot of that, those features people currently use today and are more familiar with, but in fact, we'll show you how you're able to dial with um, uh, two internal SMU employees using that soft client. You can also do group chats and conference calls. On the mobile app, and this part is important. You'll be able to log into the service on your mobile phone, but it won't provide you with uh, calls. Direct calling is not available for users who are not enterprise voice. However, you can use private message and group chat. The web app is also available to you as a secondary backup method for joining conference calls. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions in the Q&A. I think two participants raised their hands. OK, um, I see some hands raised, but there's no questions in the Q&A. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A or in the chat. And please do so we can cover your questions as we go through the material. OK, Sarah, we do have a few questions. Great. Um, the first one is on the mobile app, what is the org sign-in address? 
the org sign in address. Now we'll we'll get people screenshots <clears throat> so they can sign into their mobile devices. Uh, Laureen, do you have any further information we could share right now with those users regarding mm. the mobile app sign in? You should be signing in with your normal credentials. You just have to make sure that when you download the app, you're downloading the app for Skype for Business. Yeah, I'm pulling up my uh, mobile app uh, now. Um, we might come back to this question in a second. Um, yes. A couple other questions. Can it be used for classroom online training? If you're an enterprise voice user, it's possible for your students or students to join in via audio only. This is not the recommended tool for meeting with students because you do have diminished features. We're currently recommending Zoom for both guest access and student access when both faculty and, stu or faculty and staff need to meet with those constituents. Laureen, is there anything you want to add to that statement? Uh, no, Zoom is the recommendation. If you work with students, please use Zoom. However, you'll find that working uh, with normal daily tasks, Skype for Business is an excellent choice. Okay, um, Sarah, regarding the mobile app, I've just pulled mine back up. The organization sign-in address is actually your email address. Great. Okay. Thank you, Lorraine. Uh, we so, do have, uh, someone's asking about Teams replacing Skype. Do you want to speak to that at all? Yes, I'd be happy to. So in the roadmap uh, for Microsoft, it's nearly, uh, I believe, four or five years away. Um, we will be converting to a Teams shop. Teams functionality is great, um, but it's not something that's fully integrated with our phone system as Skype is today. Skype is our platform uh, for the new phones, and it's also the recommended platform for team, or group chats, um, and private messaging, and direct calling. Okay, and also I wanted to address um, the server name for the mobile app because uh, we did have some questions about that. So uh, to sign in the organization, you'll sign in with your email and then the server name, and it's also in the chat. It's sip.smu.edu. And then I have a couple other questions really quickly. If we order devices, can they be delivered to our homes? And Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think the answer is we don't really have an answer for that. Uh, it would be probably a conversation to have with either SMU procurement and or with your supervisor. Wouldn't you say, Laureen? Uh, that's correct. And Rachel's just typed in the chat, probably not. Yeah. But we are here and they can pick it up. It is yes. a worthwhile thing to do for headsets. They, they really prove invaluable. <laughs> Okay, is the Skype for Business only for faculty and staff, not for graduate students? As I mentioned in an earlier slide, graduate students often work for the university, and so some work-study students may have access to Skype for Business features. Uh, but uh, typically, our answer for student access is that students do not have voice service through Skype for Business, but I know a lot of students who, who do work for the university who heavily utilize uh, the, the private messaging and uh, group chat. Okay, and then the last question before we continue with your slides. Mm -hmm. The O'Neill Center is considering doing professional development for community teachers via video conferencing, and they wanna know if Skype or Zoom would be best uh, to use. With our, our current recommendations as they stand today, if you have a lot of guests that need to join or you have students, the preferred platform is Zoom. We want to make it clear that Skype for Business is really best suited to SMU employees and their work um, and collaboration between staff and faculty. That is its real strength, um, but for hosting webinars like today's, we are actually on Zoom. 
This is also so I can show you the Skype for Business functionality while not currently giving it as a presentation within that platform. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and um, mute myself so you can get back to your presentation. Thanks, Lorraine. So as you may have noticed, there are some gaps between non-enterprise voice users and enterprise voice users when utilizing the Skype for Business platform. On the soft client, uh, you have no external calling as a non-enterprise voice user. That means you can't use the dial pad and you cannot uh, dial other numbers external to SMU and receive voice service. You also cannot have external meeting attendees. So that's going to be uh, uh, students and guests because you do not have access to uh, creating a conference bridge number. Folks with enterprise voice service create a conference bridge number so those folks at least get audio service. Again, if you have those constituents, the recommended platform is Zoom so you can avoid those problems. So as we were thinking about these gaps for telecommuters, uh, we had a few solutions for you that we wanted to propose. Uh, one is before you uh, leave for telecommuting, you want to forward your PBX phone to a cell phone or a landline at home. This will enable you to receive incoming calls. I've heard from a few uh, constituents across campus that they're concerned about outgoing calls from their cell phone or personal landline to students um, and to, to others outside of the university. So you can block caller ID for cell phone calls. I believe it's star 67. And another colleague of mine recommended using a Google Voice number, which is a free service. So uh, solutions for incoming calls to be received from your regular PBX line, and then also how to place outgoing calls without sharing information. For the mobile app, you do not have calling service, voice service whatsoever. You also um, do not have conference call access. The solution here is to utilize the soft client. Remain logged in during normal working hours so you can receive calls and join meetings. You'll also use your soft client to create and join conference calls. One more time for external participants like students, please use Zoom. I think I better pause one more time for questions, Laureen, in case um, there are some questions regarding these solutions. At this point, I think you're good to keep going. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, quickly going through our soft client features, I'm gonna focus on the can't do's. So uh, as a um, non-enterprise voice user who has a PBX phone, those old khaki colored phones, you cannot use the dial pad feature on the soft client. Uh, when I do the demo, I'll be able to show you what that does look like so folks with intervoice can do those things. They can call people, they can call anyone using that dial pad feature, and uh, they can create conference call bridge numbers, which allows people to have audio access. Uh, the non-enterprise voice users have most of that functionality, but it is restricted to internal SMU employees, and they must be logged in. I'll show you the method is a little different to use uh, voice service between those users. You'll need to select their SMU email address. This will be really important. So I'm gonna try to, to get through to the demo as quickly as possible. So for the mobile app, please note that you don't have voice service uh, as a non-enterprise voice PBX user. However, it is handy for chat. So you can be assured that your colleagues are getting your messages wherever they may be. For enterprise voice users, they have full functionality of that service. For the web app, and we may not demo this particular item today, this is simply for backup for those who are having soft client issues. Um, this is basically a service so that you can join a conference call, not so much to create one. Um, 
we also do not have guest access available currently on this platform. In order to join this conference call too via the web browser, it's important to note that you'll need to connect audio through a cell phone or landline, but joining through the web browser at least allows you for video and screen sharing features. All right. Next is our live demo of at least the soft client. Well, we don't really have, um, I think, the ability to show you things in the mobile app, uh, but we will be able to post some screenshots. I'll work with Laureen to get those available to people who join the call. So first up is the soft client, and we'll go through the basics. All right, so direct calls with SMU employees can search for an individual, which I'll search for Laureen, but she's on Do Not Disturb. Notice that I am on Do Not Disturb, and that's so I don't get um, messages while I'm sharing my screen. My phone will also not ring <laughs> if I'm on Do Not Disturb. So, Laureen, who should I try to call? Maybe Zach? Uh, he might be around. <laughs> yeah, he's green. That's perfect. So. When I open up, when I double click on his icon and I hover over his name, I'll see a drop down menu. Zach Peterson is also an enterprise voice user. If I click on the ellipses, I'll see more options. If Zach was not uh, an enterprise voice user, and this could we will connect to him no matter what. I think the important thing for the folks uh, on online to, to remember is just use their email address. Whether they're enterprise voice or not, calling that email address will allow you to connect with voice service. So I'll try calling him now. Hello, Zach. My audio might be conflicting with this, so I'm going to go ahead and hang up. But I did want to show folks on the line that I have video uh, access through here, and I can also do screen sharing with my content. Can everyone hear me? I can hear you just fine, Sarah. Great. I don't know if you caught all of that when I had the window up, but. Um, we I did, so I'm assuming everyone else did too. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so uh, that gets us through direct voice calling. Now, if you're not able to connect with that person and it goes to voicemail, that voicemail will always come to your inbox over unified messaging. Those of you who receive voicemail see those transcribed messages with an audio clip that plays along with it, you will continue that service. So that's how we will all receive voicemail as telecommuters. All right. Additional calling features for enterprise voice users, that's going to be direct dial uh, and the dial pad. So I have this option here. I can do direct dial. I can dial anyone, anywhere, anytime. Uh, that is going to be specific to enterprise voice users. Those without will be able to call SMU internal employees only. Now, <clears throat> to create a conference call, I can go ahead and look for Zach again. Zach, uh, Sarah, can I interject real quick? Sure. We had a question, how, that, how can you tell if Zach is an enterprise user? Is there a way? Um, that is an excellent question. I can get back to, to you about that with um, some more documentation, but I just need to follow up with my colleague Sander to figure out what the differences are. Uh, <clears throat> typically, uh, when I call a uh, user who's still on the PBX by their phone number, I can hear it ring a PBX phone. The dial tone is completely different. It flips over to something that sounds more analog. 
Um, as far as uh, how to see them in the system that way, I, I don't actually know of any differences. And that's why I want to, to make sure I emphasize for direct voice service, you can always click on the person's email address to make a phone call. That will work on either type of user. So that is the preferred method. Thank you. Yes. All right, <clears throat> uh, let's move forward to creating conference calls. So uh, let's see, conference calls, I can uh, do it a few different ways, and there might even be more than what I'm showing you. I think it's fairly intuitive. So I'm gonna look for Zach again, since I'm picking on him today. When I double click him, let's say Zach is part of my team to quickly create a, um, a group chat. So I'm gonna to try to add another individual. Let's see, I'm not sure who I should add. Should I add Rachel? She's busy, but we'll try anyway. So now I have the two of them in a group chat. When I text, when I write into this box and I uh, send it, it will be received by both of them. The same thing if I press the call button, it will connect us together into a conference call. And that's how you can make conference calls on the fly in Skype for Business. The other method of joining a conference call is to go to this button here. It's your meeting. So usually it starts out with contacts, uh, missed calls, dial pad, and then meetings. I can just click to join. It's very, very simple. So you don't have to struggle with Outlook. Uh, however, scheduling meetings, the preferred method to creating a conference call <clears throat> in Outlook. So you can schedule them. Again, you can do ad hoc conference calls whenever you like through the soft client. But if you want to create a, a scheduled conference call, you'll need to go to Outlook. And I suppose I should open my Outlook <laughs> inbox again. So pardon my email for those of you who wa are watching. Okay. Let me go into the future. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a meeting. I'll create a new appointment. And this works for both enterprise voice users and PBX users. So the first thing I'll do is I'll invite my attendees. Sometimes the Skype meeting button will not appear unless you invite someone to it. So I'll go ahead and make uh, Laureen as a test. I suggest everyone who is interested in learning how to do this, set up a test with your colleagues so you can all get used to the platform. Uh, you don't need to fill in location because as soon as you press Skype meeting, it's going to automatically fill in. Oops, there we go. For those of you who are enterprise voice, you get all of this. This includes a conference bridge number and a conference ID. For those of you on the PBX system, you'll get this. Join a Skype meeting and then a link to that web app as a back, a secondary backup. So when I send this to Laureen, and it's in my calendar, all I have to do is right click, and I can join the meeting there, or open the meeting invite itself, and join here. And if I were to join, I would just say, I want the full audio experience. But I'm gonna cancel that for now. Laureen, can you hear me okay? I, I sure can, sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, sometimes uh, dueling audio will compete on your headset. So it, at times it can be difficult to demo some of this functionality. But 
we've gone through how to create a conference call in Outlook and via the soft client. Also, how to join a conference call in Outlook and the soft client. Are there any questions? Sarah, we have a couple questions about the mobile app. Sure. And uh, the first one is for mobile use, we use Skype for business app rather than Skype for iPhone, or does it matter? Uh, so the platform, uh, it's uh, pretty agnostic to type of phone. I believe it's available for Android and for iPhone. So if you have an Android device, you can go to the App Store and download it there. If you have an iPhone, you can download it at that App Store as well. Uh, just make sure it's Skype for Business, and then you'll log in, and you will all be on that same platform. Again, because Skype for Business is actually those three platforms all at the same time your soft client, mobile app, and web app. And it's probably possible for you to be logged into all of them at the same time. Does that answer the question? Yes, and we had a question about, um, do we use your cell phone number as the number in the mobile app? Yes. Yes, I would. I would use that. And those are the only questions I have at this moment. Perfect. All right, uh, the web browser app, it opens just as we saw before by clicking that link that's in the Outlook meeting invite. Uh, it's difficult to demo that mobile app, but perhaps I can follow up with Laureen and we can uh, come up with a creative solution or documentation for those of you online and interested in more. Uh, if there are no other questions about Skype for Business, let me just go back one more time. I'll pause for any other questions. I'll, we'll just move on to online meeting etiquette and wrap up this workshop. Laureen, does it look like we're getting any more? Sarah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay, you Okay, sorry. Um, yep. So uh, we had some questions about downloading the Skype for Business app, and is it on the SMU website, and does it cost anything? Uh, are, are they, if they're referring to the mobile app, it costs nothing to download that uh, application from the App Store. Uh, you'll just have to log in with your SMU credentials. That's the main difference. Also, I want to point out that um, Rachel has put in a link uh, in the chat for the uh, Skype for Business page. So feel free to check out that page as well. And then there is another question in the chat. To verify, if you are an enterprise user, you can use the mobile app or soft client to make a phone call to external constitu constituents. And it will show up on their phone as my work number correct? That is correct. It will show up as your work number. Okay, and a couple other questions. Um, we're getting questions if this is being recorded. We are recording all sessions today. And the other thing I wanted to let you know is right now I'm going to put in the chat um, a hyperlink and that link is uh, to the complete PowerPoint presentation as well and I'm making that available for everyone. And I think that's it. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, if there are no other questions on that, and please, if you have questions, be sure to put them into the, the Q&A chat window, and Maureen will be sure to announce them. Great. All right. You know, we're all, a lot of the campus is fairly new to online meetings. And so we thought it'd be a good idea to just go through basic online meeting etiquette. It's actually a good refresher for all of us because I, I assume that in our future we'll be having larger and larger online meetings, which can get unwieldy. So uh, just taking it from the top, uh, be mindful of your video feed. Uh, just check it out before you share it. Um, 
make sure that your <laughs> attire is appropriate and that you don't have distracting things in the background. Also, the position of your camera is important. When you join a meeting, it's also important to announce when you are on the call. Some users will be audio only, so they won't know who you are unless you say who you are uh, when you join. Also, uh, you might Microphone when you're not speaking. This cuts down on a lot of background noise, barking dogs, all of those things that are in our households uh, when you're telecommuting. Also, be quick to unmute when you need to speak. And it's, and I can say this from experience, it's definitely difficult <clears throat> when you're multitasking to really be present during the meeting. It can really impact the effectiveness of your meeting. So that's why we always recommend using video when possible. And that is the end of our presentation. We've got the help desk number here as well. Laureen's going to post um, the um, uh, PowerPoint presentation for folks uh, to share with their colleagues. This is the most up-to-date guidance on what uh, Skype for Business is and what features avail are available to different user types. I recommend sharing this with all of your colleagues if they are unable to attend these workshops. Laureen, anything else that we may have missed? Thank you so much, Sarah. And um, I have to apologize because I was typing in the Q&A and forgot to mute. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I imagine people heard me typing. But that's no, a I didn't. But that's a good example. And also, it you know, is. if you have dogs and you're working from home and they start barking, that's another great example. So um, I had a couple of questions about um, the PowerPoint. I'm going to point it, put it in the chat again. It is a link to box. Um, and I've just put it that in the chat. So if you navigate there, um, you'll be able to download the PowerPoint. And then a um, couple uh, people who showed up a little bit late wanted to know about ordering headsets or microphones, those type of things. You'll just want to go ahead and uh, go to our um, technology portal where we uh, order uh, computers and accessories, and you'll be able to find that. And I'm sharing my video to both show you how I've got nothing in my background and also this wonderful headset, which is great for only picking up audio from you, which can be important when you're working from home with a lot of other distractions and noises. All right, thank you so much. And um, a couple other people are, they seem to not be able to find the PowerPoint um, in, in Box. Uh, we'll post a link to that when we post the recording as well. So we will have those out um, as soon as we're finished all of the trainings today, we're going to quickly edit them and we'll get them on the web as soon as possible. So just be on the lookout for that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.